Hello everyone, this is uh, Anthony Starks and I'm delighted, Hello everyone. oops sorry, and I'm delighted to tell you about uh, FC, which is a high level canvas API for the Find Toolkit. Oops, sorry, hang on. <clears throat> So let's talk about the motivation for a little bit. So I needed to have an API for developers and designers to think in terms of high level objects that make up a visual display. Um, those objects are those that are familiar if you're using a modern illustration program like GIMP or Adobe Illustrator. Um, and you think in terms of text and images and lines and arcs and circles. And this API should facilitate the artful arrangement of those elements on a scalable 2D canvas. Some of the use cases are information displays, data visualizations, creative coding. If you use things like processing or p5.js, you're familiar with that. And then even presentations like we're seeing today. Here are the elements that are in FC that are supported right now. Uh, you've got text at various orientations, left-oriented, centered, and um, end-aligned. You have a circle, lines, rectangles, and an image. You might think that this isn't very much, but it turns out that combining these things together is very, very useful. There are other objects that aren't supported yet with Find that I hope to be supported in the future, like ellipses, arcs, polygons, and curves. And uh, once those are done, I think we can really see some really nice things. But we can do some good things even now. The thing to remember about FC is it works on a percent grid. Um, and the nice thing about this is it's, the, it's independent of what your canvas size is. It can scale to whatever canvas size you want, whatever aspect ratio. And you only have to remember numbers from 0 to 100. The other thing to note here is the coordinate system is a little bit different from what you would see in a typical graphics program. It's the one you learned in elementary school, where X increases left to right and Y increases bottom to top. This is also useful when we're doing graphing programs as well. So how you use things on the percent grid is you simply um, use those coordinates um, with higher level methods like rectangles, circles, and lines, as you can see here. So for example, the circle is at 50-50, which puts it right in the middle of the canvas. Uh, you've got a line that goes from 10-10 to 30-70, and a rectangle from 90-70. So this is how FC works. So what you see on the left is its basic structure. Inside it is a window, a fine window, and then a fine container with a width and a height. The way you work is you simply position your object and you add it to the container and fine does the rest. Here are the percentage-based methods that are methods on a canvas. Um, you call new canvas and get that object. And then from there, you've got methods to do things with text. As you can see, we've got a similar kind of um, um, parameter list. You have the X and the Y and the size. Um, you've got the string, for example, for centered left and um, end aligned text. You've got the ability to do uh, to grab the text width. Next, you've got your graphical elements, circles, um, where you specify the center and the radius. Um, obviously, you for, for fill color, you use color.rgba. Um, uh, you've got a couple kinds of, of rectangles, rectangles for um, where the, you specify the center as well as the upper left corner. You've got lines, images, and finally, you've got the end run, which is just a wrapper to, to finds method show and run. 
you do have some convenience methods and I've been doing this kind of programming for a while and certain methods um, show up all the time. So the ability to look up color by name is very useful. So instead of saying RGBA 128.00.255, you just say maroon. Um, so you can do that as well. So you can specify it either way. Mapping a range from one range to the other is very, very useful in graphics programming. So for example, if your world coordinates, if the data is in a certain range, you want to map that to your screen coordinates, in our case of 0 to 100. Being able to uh, do things um, from polar to Cartesian coordinates is useful when you're doing radial layouts and also to convert degrees to radians. Here is the Hello World for FC. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, you've just got a simple um, set of imports. You specify the width and the height, a couple of colors. You make your canvas, and then you put three things in it. In this case, we have a circle, some text, and some images, and one image. And it illustrates kind of the layout. So the circle, for example, its center is at 50, which is at the middle of the canvas, um, and zero, which is at the bottom. Um, it's 100%, it's rate, it's circumference, I'm sorry, it's diameter goes across the entire canvas, and it's blue. You've got center text, which is a quarter of the way up. Uh, it's 10%, meaning that it's 10 um, percent of your canvas width. You specify the color as well, and then you place the image as well. And you can specify the image scale if you like, just by changing the parameters. That's the Hello World. There are other demo and clients for uh, FC. Um, we just saw Hello World. There's one called Confetti, which um, shows um, the uh, just random objects. You've got an eclipse, uh, a, a note to uh, Piet Mondrian. Um, Sun Earth is just a, a study of the scale of a couple of celestial bodies. And that cloud one is just a way of compositing, um, in this case, circles, um, to be able to make other objects. So, as I said, you've got a very few elements, but then you can combine them together to do some very interesting things. As mentioned, there is a charting package as part of FC, and it aims to make scalable modular what I call composable charts. And that charts are broken down into their components. Um, you've got the chart types. In that case, you can do bar charts, columns, line scatter charts. But charts are also have things like titles, axes, and frames. Um, and each of these things have individual methods that you can combine um, in interesting ways. This is the, these are the data structures for um, FC slash chart. Uh, the heart of it is a name value pair. Um, but there's also a, another element for, for notes, for example. And, but the big thing is what I call a chart box, which includes a name value pair, but also other metadata, like the title of the chart, the color, where it sits on the canvas, its top, bottom, left, and right, its min or max value of the data, and whether the chart is going to be zero-based or not on the canvas. Here are the methods on Chartbox. So you get an IO reader. So that means you can pull your data from anywhere. Um, and uh, it outputs a chart box and an error, which as Andy said, we should always check. And then we've got methods for the various components, the bar chart, the horizontal line chart, bar chart, line chart scatters, the center title, the frame, the x-axis, and the y-axis. So this shows, uh, the code on the left shows um, opening two data files. Um, in this case, just for demonstration purposes, 
I'm going to plot the sine and the cosine. Um, so I'm opening, checking for errors from them. Now that I've got my IO readers, I read them into uh, the chart box with the data read method. Again, checking my errors. Once I've got them, now I can combine them. So for example, uh, here I'm doing what's called what I call a composite chart. So I'll start with the frame. We're all going to work obviously on the canvas, the, the FC canvas. The five there means that's the um, percent opacity. Um, and there's some default values. So for example, I didn't specify the color there because there's some default values that are there. Next, I'm going to lay down the labels. Um, in this case, the, uh, the x-axis labels. The 1.5 is the size, which is the size relative to the width of the canvas, obviously. Um, the 10 specifies how the interval that I'm going to use. So I'm going to show the label every 10th time. The next one is the y-axis label. Again, I'll specify the size of the text, um, the range of the data, as well as having the format um, string. The Boolean there means that I'm going to use the sort of grid that you see there, the horizontal grid. Next, I'll specify my colors. Because I already have my sine and cosine data loaded, I can just one, make one red and make one green. And then I'll drop in the scatter charts for both of those. If you wanted to um, um, composite other kind of data, you can just say, let's say sign.bar, um, and it will drop the bar chart right there with it. Sometimes you want to composite things together. So this is a case where we have that data before. Um, we're going to specify the, um, the position on the canvas, the left and the right and the top and the bottom. We'll do before, in this case, we'll turn the title on. We'll have a frame. Um, we'll turn on the scatter. So it could, you can see the frame is, reflects the color of the overall data. And uh, for the one next to it, we'll just offset the, um, how, how far we're going to do. So we'll shift the left and the right over. We'll keep the top and the bottom the same. And then we'll specify the title, the frame. That's FC chart. One of the reasons why I want this kind of package is to have a viewer for another package that I've built called uh, DeckShell. DeckShell is a way to specify the kinds of things you're talking about, text and graphics and, and, and images and so forth, um, as a script. So for example, the presentation that you're seeing right now is written in DeckShell. Um, so I wanted to have a viewer um, for that. Um, and here's the, um, the fine implementation of that. What you see there in the, uh, the presentation that you see there is another um, package that I've written called dchart, which also generates deck markup. Um, so you can go lots of different ways. It turns out it was pretty simple once I had the graphics primitives to write a client for, for DeckShell. So that's all I have right now. And I uh, want to thank you for your time. If you'd like to go get it, here is the URL. Uh, this presentation is also in that um, rep repository in the presentation um, directory. Thanks for your time.